welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Denton Gentry. Uh, we're here today to talk about software development for Project Drawdown. The project was founded in 2014 to create a plan to uh, uh, reverse global warming by researching and modeling the potential of proven solutions to reduce new emissions and sequester prior emissions of greenhouse gases. At the start of the project, the tool chosen to create the climate solution models was Microsoft Excel. Uh, this was a reasonable choice at the time, but as there are now more than 100 separate files, the project has outgrown Excel as a tool. And we're working to re-implement the model methodology exactly as it is using Python in a web-based system. This talk will focus not really on the model, but on the process and on the techniques to re-implement it in Python. The Excel implementation of the model is, is well structured. There are tabs in the spreadsheet to encapsulate the different modules in the overall model. Um, operating cost is a tab in the spreadsheet. The estimation of adoption is a tab and, and so on. The Python implementation follows this same structure. Each sheet in the spreadsheet has been implemented in a Python class and data flows through the Python implementation in the same way that it flows through the spreadsheet. The first step, uh, which happened in, in late 2018, was to implement a single module, a single spreadsheet tab of the model in Python and host it in a Flask web server running locally. We added visual basic code to a modified spreadsheet, which would use HTTP to post input data from the Excel modules to Python and fetch the results. The visual basic code would then paste the results into the appropriate cells within the spreadsheet and continue on with the rest of the model in Excel. Faithfully reproducing the uh, operation of the original model would be key. Uh, we wrote an automated test, which first starts Excel with the unmodified, the original uh, implementation of the model, again with our modified version that fetches parts of its operation from Python and compares that the results at each step are within a floating point margin for error. The test can show that the new implementation gets the same results for the same reasons as the original. The integration test is constructed as a kind of a large collection of tuples of Excel uh, cell ranges and the Python method that corresponds to them. There are some additional complexities that, that six minutes does not allow for uh, to handle with variations in the formatting of uh, some of the Excel files. There's been some drift over time. We moved more modules from the spreadsheet into Python until we reached the point where all that modified spreadsheet was doing really was one enormous HTTP post. So at that point, we discontinued the use of HTTP. The integration test runs Excel on the original unmodified model. It runs the Python code just directly, and then it compares the results at each step. The integration test is one of the crucial bits of infrastructure uh, in this. It's been rewritten several times and the reason behind each version uh, may be informative. So the Excel version of the model contains various bits of visual basic code, especially in choosing a set of input assumptions called a scenario. And so it's not sufficient to just open the Excel uh, spreadsheet with a, a file reader. None of them can run visual basic code. So we have to remotely control Excel. Excel Wings is an open source Python package which uses native OS facilities, uh, Apple events on, on Mac OS, for example, to control Microsoft Excel. So version one of the integration test would start Excel. It would access the different sheets. It would read values all by sending events to Excel to perform the operation and send back the result. Now this worked, except when it didn't. Sometimes it would just hang like an event got lost uh, and the, the test would just stop. Uh, the more solutions we added, the more Excel files that we tried to test, the less likely that it would make it all the way through without hanging. We got to about 10 before it, it became unworkable. It would just, it would hang uh, in almost every run. So the second version of the integration test still uses Excel wings just to run the visual basic code. It selects a set of inputs and then it saves the resulting file out to a temporary directory. We then open the file and read results directly from it without, without going back and forth from Excel so many times to, to get it. Hanging Excel really wasn't a 
problem anymore. It basically never happened. There were so few calls, so few round trips left. This got us to about 50 Excel files before we hit the next problem. Um, it was slow. It got to the point where it would not complete the test even running overnight on a MacBook Pro. Reading the Excel file, reading in the values was quite quick, but that remote operation of Excel to open the file, run the Visual Basic code, save it out, took a long time. One minute. Version three uh, decouples the initial step altogether. It runs Excel wings offline, it saves the resulting values to a zip file, and it reads the zip file back in. Uh, this version doesn't use Excel, Excel wings at all. It, it's done offline and the values are checked in. And at this point, I expect this to be the final one. It'll take us to the point where we discontinue Excel altogether. So what comes next? At some point, we will stop using Excel. and We will no longer have it as the authoritative test uh, of whether the Python model works. Uh, so what will we do then? I think we're going to need some similar tests, maybe checking that the major results like costs or emissions are within some percentage of the baseline for a given solution. And if it changes more than that, then maybe that needs to be looked at again. We might also assert realism, uh, no more than so many tons per acre, no more than so many dollars or less dollars per ton. Uh, on the whole, though, I'm pretty excited about it. The new model has tests, it has code coverage metrics, it has dashboards about the health of the models, things that were just never possible while working with Excel. I'm over. And with that, we'll turn it over for questions. Oh. Well, great timing. So if, <laughs> if anyone has a question, if they want to put it in the chat, and then I can call on you um, once I see them. Um, one question. I sort of had is a, um, if you could really briefly maybe, maybe tell us a little bit more about the, what the model itself does. Um, I, sure, the model fundamentally, it, um, at its heart, it's an economic model. It estimates the total demand for a given whatever it is. If it's energy, it's demand for energy. If it's uh, cars, it's passenger kilometers of, of trans, tra uh, transportation. If it's a land solution, it's square kilometers. It estimates the adoption of a given solution toward that total demand over time. It then calculates the results based on that adoption, costs, uh, emissions, and so on. Cool, thank you. Um, and Tom Bren. Um, thanks for the talk. Are you, how are you expecting users to interact with the model? Because I mean, most people can use Excel. Um, in the future, are they gonna be interacting with the web interface? I mean, I mean, will it be as customizable? I mean, will there be a loss because most people can't use Python? Yeah, um, and so yes, that is an issue. We have a, a few things. One is that decoupling the model from the user interface means that there can be multiple interfaces. And so I do expect to have like one interface for a broader audience just interested in seeing results of the solutions, a different interface that allows a researcher, for example, to drill into a particular solution. Maybe they're adding data sources or they're changing assumptions. And the most lowest level interface being do a Git clone and start typing out Python files. Um, the, uh, but, but yes, it is a big jump and it getting the um, people that work on the model uh, comfortable with that jump is an ongoing thing we, we are concerned about. And Robbie, do you want to go ahead with your question? Okay. More oh. of a comment. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I describe this technique as projected accounting with interactions. And just to point out, this community is very heavily into integrated system models. And I, I really see a a possibility for um, these two methods to, to be used uh, in parallel um, to compare results, to compare inputs, um, and so forth. Do you have a comment on that? Um, my main comment on that would be that would be a great conversation to have with the, the head of the modeling effort, that is Chad Frischman. He's the VP of research at, at Project Drawdown. Uh, my role is I'm a software developer, and so um, Chad would definitely be the, the right party for that kind of conversation. Yeah, I already started talking to him actually, and some of the people in Amsterdam. Okay, excellent. Okay, thank you very much.